Hi, Michael Bettine here once again for It's Cup of Time. And today is sort of a part two to last week's Basic Recording 101 video. If you saw last week, you know, I took recording from setting up your recorder, recording your music, then taking that putting it into your computer, editing it down to a finished wave or MP3 file. But there's a lot more to it than just that. That was the actual recording part. But I want to talk today about accessories and sort of the behind the scenes, the things you need if you're going to record. Okay. And the fun part is this is the third try at making this video various problems on the first two tries and it's like okay we get to do it one more time so for people who think having a youtube channel and making video is an easy thing it isn't always you know i shot this whole video yesterday and then i go to edit it and it's just like not nah, it's just not looking good it's not happening blah 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 so I reshot the whole thing today. I had some technical problems and it's like, nope, that's not gonna work. So here we are a third time and hopefully it's the charm. Okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna record. First thing is like last week we have our recorder. Here's my little Zoom H1N, little handy recorder here. Now, you say, I want to record myself. Okay, I got this little recorder. What do I do with it? Well, you can place it, you can put it on a chair cushion, you could put it on a shelf, you could put it on the floor, or whatever, but that's not a good, really good solution. You need some sort of a stand. Here's a basic zoom tripod stand. All of your recorders have threads in the bottom, a little mount, so you can just put it on here. Boom, it's a great little stand. Let's set it over here. You can put it on a shelf. You can put it on the floor if you had to. You can put it on a chair. You can put it on a case, whatever. But it's nice to have it on some sort of a stand. This is a little zoom stand. I think I have three of these because they're so handy. I mean, the legs just fold up. I can stick this and the recorder in my pocket, in my bag, and I'm good to go for recording. The other nice thing on this is it has a little ball joint, so if when you set it, you can aim it however you want. But at its most basic, you want some sort of a stand. So you can find little small stands like this. There's various ones out there. If you look on an audio dealer's website, somebody like Sweetwater or B&H Photo or good old Amazon, you can find something like this. I'll put a link in the description to this particular one, which I said is a little zoom stand. It works on all recorders. It can work on cameras also. Great little unit. Like I said, if I just take it off here, fold it up. I mean, there's not much there. I take my little zoom I put it in the case, and that's another thing. Have a case. If you're going to go out of your house, have a case. These cases are inexpensive. I've got cases for all my gear. Zoom makes cases for all their stuff, or you can get some third-party ones. But here we go. I'm set to record. I can go anywhere with this. I can put it in my coat pocket, my bag. You could put it in a purse. It doesn't take up a lot of room and you're set for field recording, live recording, whatever. So a stand of some sort, there you go. Another one would be to get a bigger stand. Something like this. You can put your recorder or microphones on. This is a stand by Hercules. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them. I don't get any money from them, but I really advocate for their stands. I think they're, they're great stands. I've been using them for a number of years now because I got tired of having the cheap $20 bargain mic stands fail on me. 
and I've had plenty of them fail. And if you think about it, if you've got like a $500 recorder sitting on top of your stand, or a $500 mic, or a pair of $500 mics, $1,000 in mics or more, on your stand, you want to trust it to a $20 stand, and as you're playing, the boom doesn't want to stay up, and so it's like this, and or it's doing this, or the whole stand is going down, or it tips over or something, and there's your expensive gear smashed on the floor. No, you don't want that. So don't cheapen out on a mic stand. I mean, if you're just going to record at home, okay, you could get a $20 stand, but I recommend you buy a better quality stand. These Hercules stands usually run from about 80 to 100 bucks, somewhere in there. You can often find a deal. Well, let's just talk about this one. I really like it. Let's turn this around. One thing I like, it's got a big knob. It's just a single big knob, easy to turn, so I can adjust my boom arm however I want it. Stays in place. This one has a quick release clutch for going up and down, which is real nice. So I don't have to like twist anything to try to get it and then try to tighten it. It works out really well. You can see it goes up fairly high. I can get the boom up higher. Uh, another thing I like about these is their booms clip on. So I can take it off and now I have a straight stand. I can just pop a mic clip on here. You know, have a straight stand. Or for transport, or can I put this <laughs> put this here carefully? Transport, you know, I can just collapse this, fold up the legs and everything, and this fits in a case much easier. So I really like a lot of the design features Hercules has come up with. Put this back on, flip the lever, I'm in business with a boom stand. So this is great. Another one I like is a little heavier duty stand, a little bigger tubing. It still has that quick release clutch. And if you notice, it's a straight stand. Lower it a little here. So if I loosen this up, I can pull the arm all the way up. And now I have a boom stand. How great is that? A hideaway boom. This is perfect. I love this stand. I've got a couple of them that I use because they're so versatile. And again, for packing, you can just put this back, put it all the way down, fold up the legs, and it's very portable. Fit it in your bag, your case, whatever. But this is a great stand. I really like the design. Again, it's that one knob feature. So I'm not sponsored by Hercules, but I will have links down below to these particular stands. And if Hercules sees this video and wants to sponsor me and send me some stands, I would appreciate it because I really like your gear. I have another one over here. This has got one of my cameras on it right now, if you can see it in the picture. So they're great. Again, do not buy the cheapest stand out there. These will last, the good stands last. Here's a great example right here, this duo. This is very old school. <laughs> it's got the cast iron base. I believe this is a Sure stand and this is an AKG Boom. And I got these in about 1975. So they're almost 50 years old and they still work. Boom still works. So if you buy quality gear, it's going to last. So I don't take this out, but I use it here in the studio for things when I need an extra stand. So there you go. Whatever you buy any gear, I don't care what it is, don't buy the cheapest thing out there unless that's all you can afford because a couple of things, the cheaper things tend to fail easier and don't last and then you're just going to end up buying the better one. So you might as well buy the better one first. If you can, save up your money and get the better stand, the better gong stand, you know, things like that. The better bag, the better case. In the long run, you will be happier. So other things we need to talk about here. How do you mount your mics? Okay, 
that's a good thing. Take this stand here. You can use a standard mic clip, and I've got all these parts here. Standard Sure mic clip, as they would call it. So this will hold a vocal type mic, like I said, like a Sure SM58 or whatever. Boom. It's great for those big barrel tapered mics. And related to that is from Zoom. I got parts everywhere here, so you just have to put up with me. Here it is. The Zoom MA-2. This is the greatest accessory ever invented. It is a holder designed to fit into a sure type mic clip. And let's get my recorder back out here. It has the small threads that will fit on your digital recorder or a camera. It's designed to be able to just pop it in on a mic clip. And I really like that as opposed to having this have a smaller thread adapter and I got to spin it to get it on here and I want to take it off and I got to spin everything. It's just like, there we go. It's on. And in case you want to walk around with it and record stuff, it's perfect. The MA-2, it's the best accessory. They're like $8. I have at least three of these that I use on my recorders. So a mic clip, you have something like that. Or you can get just a, a standard mic clip, depending on the size of your mic. Smaller ones for what they call a pencil mic or a small diaphragm condenser. And uh, so let's look at, most of the recording I do is stereo. I tend to buy things in pairs, um, match set of microphones, small diaphragm condensers or large diaphragm condensers because I do a lot of stereo recording. So let's take this clip off. Again, just spin the tube, spin the arm, don't spin the holder, that's just kind of a waste. So if you want to record in stereo, you can get something like this, a stereo bar can put it on here. Here's my two mic clips. Pop your mics in there. This is an inexpensive one. This is just like a little piece of sheet metal. They put threads in the hole in the middle. You have these little knobs here where you can screw the, the holder on and off. These run at like $15 or so, maybe $20. I've got a whole bunch of these. I use one up here in the ceiling on my SE8 stereo pair. I've got, it's a little better unit than this. I have that up there. But this is all you need. And then you can pop your mics in there. And again, to do this is kind of ridiculous. Just spin the tube. And here's another type of holder. Let me show this to you. Let me just start it. Yeah, see. So much easier than me trying to spin this whole thing around in a circle. That's not going to work. All right. Here we go. This is a stereo bar. Ah, come on. This one's got to get adjusted a little here. All right. This is by a company called Sabra. I think it runs forty or fifty dollars. It's a. Mo they have a whole modular system. Like. They use a hex bar so this thing can slide on. You can get wider bars. So if you want to spread your mics out, let's say like here, you can have a much wider bar and do that. So it's kind of an interesting thing that way. These are all composite as opposed to metal. So some people don't like them. Uh, I find it works well. So I have some different attachments for this. This can go side to side. You can spin it around, have it in the center. But here we go. Stereo miking. This is a little off. Got bumped here. This is, should be more like that. This is an NOS, which is a wider array. I like recording that way in order to get a little wider sound field as opposed to, let's pop this up, as opposed to the standard XY 
where they're just crossed over at the capsules. I think that gets a little narrower. I like a, a wider feel. But here's a stereo bar. Another example, if you buy, like I said, buy a pair of mics. Here's my SE 4400s. I'm going to move this out of the way here. And it comes in a nice case. I've got the, the two mics. I've got the two mounts. And it comes with a really nice stereo bar. If you notice, it's much longer. And it has these slots. So you can really vary where the mics are. I like this one a lot. It's, it's really heavy-duty metal. It's, it's well built. This will last forever. It'll outlast me. So you can do this for stereo miking. And what's nice with this, if you're using a shock mount, and we will talk about those in a second, this gives you more room to attach your mics. But it's great. And like I said, many pairs of mics, if you buy a match set, a stereo pair, they will come with a stereo bar. Okay, so let's get this off of here. Again, just spin it. Spin the, the boom arm, the boom tube, and it comes off easily. <laughs> so as we see on here, you know, it's your standard mic clip to fit this size of microphone. And most mics will come with a clip because different models of mics from different companies will have different diameters. So you need to have a specific one on these types. But what another type you can use is what's called a shock mount. So we kind of look at this here. You see it's what they call a spider mount or a shock mount. They are elastic cords in here and the center is isolated from the outer frame. Let's pop it on here real quick. Oops, get that lined up here. And that's an important thing is make sure your threads are lined up correctly so you don't cross thread them and wreck it because then, then you're in, in trouble. Okay, so the shock mount just goes on like that. We take the microphone, we we'll just and open it up, pop our mic in there, and there it is. Perfect. Nice, easy mount there. And the idea with this is it moves some. So it, if the stand gets bumped or the cord gets bumped, that it should isolate the microphone and you don't get the noise, or at least reduces the noise. The shock mounts come in different types. This is pretty much your standard one here, like this. And like I said, on the SE8s, they come in one where they sit in it more. <laughs> Let's pop one out real quick. And this one, these mics don't come with a clip, although you could get a clip that they will fit on. goes in here, tighten this up, and then this part will go onto your mic stand, and there you go. It'll hold your mic. So there's different types of suspension mounts like this, and a lot just depends on the type of microphone you have. But that's one option. When I record live, I usually don't use any of these because a couple of reasons. One, they're a bit of a pain. It takes more time to set up. And, you know, there's more to travel with. They're bigger and you got to have them put them in a case or box or something. So they're kind of a pain. Or it's just... A regular mic clip like this it is so easy. It's small. With this, I just, I'd leave this set up like this. 
pop the mic up. I travel like this. I just leave it this way. All set and ready to go. If I had any of these on there, I would I would have to take them off. I wouldn't want to travel like that. But this, I just leave it. I put this on my stand, get my mics out, snap them in there. I'm good to go. So it's, it's much quicker that way. But suspension mounts are, are great. I mean, they, they do their job. I will use them here in the studio sometimes if I'm recording. Or like with the 4400s, that's the mount they come with. So I have to use that. I haven't purchased any different mounts. It was last year, I think. I was playing at one of my favorite venues. Really, uh, it's a nice sounding room, and also it's a very nice looking room. So I had planned to videotape the session because I knew I could get like a really great video and audio out of that. So I went in there, got all my gear set up, did my session, come home. I look at the video. The video looks fabulous. It's just like, ah, oh, perfect. Take the audio card out of my recorder, put it in my computer, put it up on the screen, and I go, what? I look at the waveform, and it's just like, it's a mess. And I turn it on, and I'm listening, and all I hear is this. <laughs> I had set my recorders up underneath a vent from the ceiling. So when the heater kicked on, all this air came directly down and hit not only, I was using what, the H6 here, hit not only the built-in mics, it hit the external mics that I had right next to it, and it hit the camera <laughs> mics too, because everything was in close proximity. So I have three audio recordings None of them are salvageable because the noise is so bad from the wind. Going directly right on to the mics. Lesson learned. Now, when, I, when I'm outside, I always put a windscreen on. Here's a little foam windscreen. It just kind of stretches over the end here. There, you're good to go. It reduces all the wind noise. And this is great. So when I'm outside doing field recordings, I usually will have a windscreen with me. But inside, I didn't think of it. I hadn't been at that venue in a long time. When I'm setting up, I, you know, I'm busy. I'm not paying attention to the airflow and all that. And when I started, it was fine. But then about 10 minutes in, that heater kicked in and the air started blowing and it hit the mics. It, it, it totally ruined it. I have the most beautiful video and no audio I can use with it other than some snippets when the heater wasn't on. So a windscreen. They often come with your recorder or you can buy them and it's worth like five or ten bucks to get one of these. And now when I record indoors I always do two things. I check for the vents to make sure you know I'm not in proximity and sometimes you can't help it. It's the only place you can set up. But I always use a windscreen indoors too now. Just because of that. So here's my H6. My zoom here. Let's put it up here. And I've got a, a nice foam that will go on here like this. Again, you just stretch it over. Boom. We're good to go. We can record. And you can, here you can see that against the gong here. And it's great. If I'd have, and I even had this with me. If I would have taken two minutes to pop it on, you would have seen that video on YouTube already because it was such a nice video. Another type you can use is this, this fuzzy guy here. This is what they commonly refer to as a dead cat windscreen because it kind of looks like a dead cat. It's like a mesh inside. We've got this fake fur on it, and it does the same thing. See, let me loosen it up here a little. And you just stretch it over, tighten it down so it doesn't fall off, and boom, there you go. 
Now you may have seen something like this if you've watched documentaries or maybe in the news or you know photographs of people filming uh, shows or you know especially outdoor they might have a boom mic guy's got a pole and he's got a mic at the end of the pole and he's holding it over the people who are talking and it's got a dead cat windscreen on it so you've probably seen some sort of screen like this it works great so if you're outside or even inside i recommend you know getting a windscreen like foam ones five ten twenty dollars Dead cats, fifteen to fifty dollars or whatever, depending on what type of recorder you're putting it on. Right, let's say this is my stereo mics here. I use this sort of a bar. This is just a, a side bar. I've got a, a standard Sure type clip on it, and this will just attach. This open enough. It will attach to my mic stand. So when I'm doing my stereo recording, I will have my mics up here on the stereo bar. And I will put my recorder, whichever one I'm using, on the side here. Run my cords into here. There we go. There's my double setup on one stand. And this is a great piece. This one, this particular one I have here is from K&M, Koenig and Meyer, a German company. This is built just really well. This thing will last forever. I have a couple of less expensive ones that I, I use, but again, these things are $15, $20, $25, something like that. A great accessory that you can put I could do it the other way. I could have my recorder on here and put the stereo mics on here. I can hook it up here. They're, they're very versatile to run an extra mic or something off of a mic stand. I'm not sure what you would call this, a side holder or something, but I, I will put a link in the description below so you can find that. Okay. I guess the only other thing to talk about is we're talking about mic clips and using something like the MA2 here. Let's take this off and put on a different sort of holder. This is more of a camera holder. But it works on all of your standard digital recorders because they have the same sort of mount on the bottom. I can't remember what the screws are on this, but here we'll take a little zoom. It's the same thing here. So you can mount a camera. I use this on some of my videos, like the one up there is on one of these mounts, the camera. So you can use this. What I like about it, it does have the ball joint so you can move it wherever you want. This is great for cameras or you can put your recorder on it too. So I've got two or three of these. They run about $15. You get them by various names on stage. I know makes them and the same, the same thing under various brands. You can buy them at music stores, photography stores, Amazon, whatever. But it's a, it's a nice little accessory. Another way to hold your recorder or a camera if you had a DSLR or something or you know other types of cameras. So I use one up there on that camera, on my wide angle camera. So there we go, just you know, basic accessories. I think I covered pretty much everything here. Just to make your job easier. And you know, you just need more than to have a recorder and just plop it on a chair cushion. Like I said, just get the basic, basic little desk stand. There's all types of them out there and it works fine. Then you can put it with some stability on the floor, on a chair, on a shelf, or like here, I've got a case sitting there. You're good to go. So I hope that helped give you some ideas on, you know, other things that you'll need I could talk about cords. I mean, you, you do need mic cords. 
Ha, ah, chords, what a fun sort of thing to talk about because uh, it's funny. I used to work at a very high end stereo store and we sold tons of super, super expensive cable and we pushed it because it made a lot of money. It had the highest profit margin and it's like you don't have to buy the most expensive mic cords out there. You don't want to buy the cheapest ones. Because what, what happens is a lot of those, they just kind of have funky connectors that don't plug in right and that. But, you know, decent cords. $25 for a cord for like a, a 15 or 25 foot cord will work. I mean, you're not a touring show. You're not Taylor Swift playing 180 dates around the world. And that stuff is just getting used all the time and in and out of trucks and all that. No. You know, you're doing a few gigs here and there and you're recording yourself. The, the ones I use when I put my stereo mics up here, I've got a, a pair of five foot cords because the mics aren't going to be that far from the recorder and I don't want cords hanging everywhere. I bought a pair of five foot cords. I think it was $20 for the pair. I've had them probably five years now and I've used them for hundreds of gigs and recording sessions and they're fine and they still work well. So cords. Yeah. Buy decent mic cords. Don't buy the cheapest. Again, like a mic stand. Don't buy the cheapest. Don't ever buy the cheapest anything if you can help it. Buy a, a better quality. But you don't need to buy $100 mic cords. Uh, that's overkill for what we're doing and who we are. I guess the final thing was, let's talk about power. That's, that's kind of an important thing. Power up your gear. Four AA batteries. If you're running your built-in mics and you're running two external phantom-powered mics, it can eat up four AA batteries fairly quickly. The little zoom over here, this is two AA's. It just has built-in mics. Um, you can go forever on those two batteries. It's amazing. It, it will go forever. So that's not such a big problem with this one but something like this or my Tascam because it has a, a touch screen which eats up even more power I mean you're going to go through batteries what I always use is your standard battery pack recharge pack like you would use for a phone or something the nice thing about all these recorders is they can be powered through USB so you can plug it into um your computer and run it from there or use a battery pack. This will last weeks if not months depending on how much recording you're doing and how big the pack is. I have probably six or seven of these and I just change them out every now and then. They all have a little meter like you can see this is down to one so I will probably pull this and charge it right after I film here and then it'll be good to go. One thing I've done on all of these is I put fuzzy Velcro on the back and on my stands I have the prickly side of the Velcro so I can just stick my power pack on there and there it is. There we go. There's my basic setup. Recorder, battery pack, mic stand. There we go. It works well and I can go hours and hours, days and days on a battery pack. And it's easy to, if you need to, you can just, you know, swap it out, plug another one in, bang, you're good to go. The Velcro has been a lifesaver, and that was another lesson hard learned. I was playing a festival, and I was recording all my performances, and I had... I wasn't using Velcro then, and I wasn't my mic stand either, so that didn't help. But I kind of had it hanging on there, and somebody must have bumped it, or else gravity did it, and it pulled the cord out just enough that the recorder stopped because it had no power. And this great performance, I got no recording of because of that. So, like I said, another lesson learned the hard way, right, and that's like, I don't want this to happen again. So I came up with the Velcro idea. I use Velcro for a lot of stuff. I mean, you can buy it by six inch strips. You can buy little dots. 
I usually buy the big roll, like 15 feet or 20 feet of Velcro in a box because I use it for so many things. It works you know, really well. And yeah, so Velcro your battery packs to your stand. It's perfect. So thanks for watching. I hope you got some good ideas out of this two-part series here, and it will make your recording journey easier. So please, any comments or questions, put them down below. I always read the comments and I always try to answer the questions. That's important to me. And also, if you do some recordings, if you want to pop a link to your recording down there, I'd like to listen to it. If you have any problems, let me know. I'll try to help out. Maybe I'll make another video if people have the same sort of problems, or I can just type something in there if it's easy enough. But thanks for watching. Have fun recording, and we will see you next It's Cup of Time.